welcome to the Pettit Shire Pen Pals. My name is Antonio. Oh, oh, Nathaniel, you're on mute. Unmute I'm Nathaniel. Yourself. I'm Nathaniel. Oh, hello, everybody. I'm Nathaniel. Now Antonio's on mute. Antonio, do you realize that you're on mute? What? There we go. Are we on Zoom? <laughs> this is every is single right Zoom now? Is this going out live? <laughs> <laughs> well, in case, uh, in case that wasn't apparently uh, clear and um, perfect, uh, welcome to Pettitshire Pan Pals. My name is Antonio. And I'm Nathaniel, and we are your personal quarantines. We're also brothers with each other. That's true. For uh, what? Almost uh, f 39 years. Almost 39 years. Yeah, that's yeah. rough. You that's rough. might have a birthday coming right around the corner. And that's, you know, I wish I could say that was something um, kind of unique to you. But I, I know that it's, it's not that among your uh, cohort, you have. Yeah. Many... No, May the 7th is a big, it's a big day for birthdays. Um, it was it was real popular in the year 1980 to have a May 7th birthday just because, or 1981 to have a mm -hmm. May 7th birthday just because. Um, well, with the, Mount St. Helens the year before, I, I imagine. Right, that's, yeah, that's, that's exactly like right. Mount St. Helens and, babies. Um, yeah, I think it also maybe had something to do with Jaws coming out. But <laughs> the, the, the point being also, it was just recently our uh, lovely mother and fan favorite Linda Pettit's birthday on the floor. Oh, yes. Yes, it was. Happy birthday, Mom. Happy birthday, Ma. Many happy returns. It's a, it's a weird one. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah, big lockdown scenario. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, what, what is that like for you? Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting because I, my life is, is rather unchanged from how it is as an it's ordinary not, hermit no, uh, not with, who works from home with a cat. Uh, we <laughs> just kind of keep doing our own thing and... Uh -huh. It's easy to not leave the house for four or five days on end. It's, sure. it's not taking a shower yeah. is a default a first state. nature. <laughs> yeah, no, the, it's so it hasn't been it hasn't been a really a revolution for me in any sense, except that like it is fun to watch the world around us adapt to the concepts. And one of the one, what, part of that is like you'll see ads now that are that are quarantine specific or like, you know, uh, uh, um, stay-at-home order specific um where uh you know it'll be like oh well for the for the quarantine we've decided not to touch your pizza anymore or we're like all these things that they were already weren't doing i mean as, you know, if they, if they have a business license, they i guess we're learning a lot about uh <laughs> yeah, that's right. what the, what the pre-pandemic business practices were <laughs> but the weirdest one i saw was for some, ad, i can't remember what the car company was but it was um Oh, it, and if you're laid off because of the pandemic, we're going to offer you lenient financing and like no payments for some sort of like, no, no, don't be offering humongous lines of credit to people who just lost their jobs. That's exactly uh, how we got into the recession last time. Well, but they'll drop it off at your house. Uh, they, they, you won't even have to come to the dealership. <laughs> that's, and true. that's right. And free car delivery. We'll make the first couple payments because that, you know, why not get the ball rolling, right? Well, I just, yeah, like, yeah, shackle yourself now. Going fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you, I mean, I think they're assuming that you were, you got a stimulus check and maybe, you know. Stimulus. Yeah, a little, little stimmy action. Uh -huh. um, th that's the other thing is that they're just, you know, it it doesn't count as a stimulus if it's not, you know, you, you, you the, 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 the point of an economic stimulus when you're spending money, I mean, if you're giving money to people, is that they'll spend it. And they won't spend it on things like goods and services if you only give them enough to, to cover part of their, like, basic bills. <laughs> you know, like, if, they, if, if you've covered part of their rent that month, you're not going to radically increase their spending trends. <laughs> well, especially if, if the other part of their rent is not covered. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. right, right, right. Definitely not wow. going to be the the first item on the list. Is uh, well, I don't know. Maybe it is. I mean, you know, and and that's your business. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. I mean, the 
the the crazy thing to me is that there's you know obviously there's no you know we all know there's no it's no revelation that there's no leadership from the top but what's crazy to me is just how little comment there's been from anyone besides like state governments you know there's not even any there's there's still what kills me is when reporters are interviewing the president and they're they're still like asking him questions like he is spending his time thinking about this when like he's flabbergasted in at his answers yeah, yeah. But, but but yeah but what did you mean make... when you said this yesterday and the answer is what he meant was nothing it was just a stream <laughs> of consciousness on the spot is what you heard yesterday it had no, it had nothing to do with any premeditated philosophical refinements that he had made to his opinions <laughs> if there ever is an end to this i mean i you know i'm starting to see people you know kind of speculating about what an end to this might look like and you know it's Maybe basically it's just like you know at the end of this we're never going to <laughs> like there's so much of this that we're just never going to want to go back to you know oh, yeah that, no it's the... become so so transparently um you know, it's just become so transparently uh, clear how much of the country hasn't been working for so many people. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, the, the, so the, the two big memes that I think are really important, if a meme can be really important right now, are A, that if all of the service people and frontline workers and everything disappeared, life as we know it would grind to a halt. It would be done. We'd all be f- screwed. But if all of the CEOs disappeared tomorrow, nothing would happen. There'd be no negative consequences. We know that because there's nothing, there's, you know, none of them are economically engaged right now. But if all the nurses disappeared, we'd all die. Right, right. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't, there's no, the, 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 at the moment, in the middle of a pandemic, the ownership class doesn't have a lot of inherent value. <laughs> well, or, you know, I mean, I guess this is a, a time that we're all examining you know, the capitalistic structure, but you know, the, the, the owner class never has value. Like that's, no, that's the thing. Right. They're, that's, they're not producing any value at all. Was that, yeah, the whole, the whole point of being owner class is that you're extracting excess value from the people below you. Right. right. So trying to, you know, pretend like, um, that there's somehow, uh, the owner class is going to, you know, suddenly become benevolent and save us all. Um, oh, it's just, yeah, yeah, no. It, I mean, it, it could have happened already. Despite um, if it the were fact to... that there's some some percentage, some, some shockingly sizable percentage, forty percent or so, of people who like um, don't you know don't don't are are like susceptible to the American dream argument. I guess would be the most benevolent way of putting it. That you know, there's a majority of people who just have so have by design been left with so little investment in the current extant system that they have no incentive to go back to the way things were. We shouldn't go back to the way. Yeah. There's a a series on um, second thought that I like a lot um, on YouTube. And, and, you know, one of the things that they, they point out is that, um, you know, the, the flaw is that people are invested enough in the, in the system that's killing them to want to see it, keep moving. To see it perpetuated. Perpetuate. Right. right? But because they have, you know, some kind of like, uh, like at least perceived stake in the game. So then when it comes time to, um, you know, defend that, you know, of course they're going to say, well, yeah, I, I don't want to lose the, you know, what I invested into this system. Right. And it's understandable. Like, you know, anytime that there's a stock market loss, it's like, yeah, that kind of sucks that this miracle money that was just, you know, passively being earned is suddenly gone. Well, you know, and, and I did put in some of mine, and so that sucks. <laughs> it's not, you know, the the one of the one of the um, ah, one of the great weird errors that the United States made uh, back in the like starting in the seventies or so, it was starting to put uh, 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 pensions, retirement funds into four hundred one ks, right? So they just they just started gambling with everybody's securities which is a, i i mean you, i don't have to be a financial advisor to tell you that's not smart you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh so it you know it uh, we have a our, our our entire monetary system is very um what poorly designed for what it claims it's supposed to do I mean, it's not, you know, the monetary device. Like is a, 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 a representation of like uh, goods and services. Like, yeah, I need exactly in terms of I, real I value. Give you a box, a, like I say, a bag of barley, 
and that requires me like walking it over to you. No, right, right. No, it's 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 you know, capitalist capital devices do make it possible to not have to proffer the goat up front. All right, <laughs> they, they have that advantage, which is convenient. I think it's very convenient. It makes a lot of things possible. It makes financing large projects possible in a way that's very difficult to do with barter. It's it's hard to build a skyscraper on a barter economy. I mean, you could do it, but you know, it's hard to do it. Right. So that said, though, there isn't um, you know at this at, at this point where you know money is just purely uh, conceptual and it's you know just mm -hmm. it's not backed by anything tangible. No. Um, other than, you know, bits and, and data. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, there aren't uh, billionaires that have, I mean, maybe there are. You know, I wonder if there are. I should okay. not speak so soon. There may be billionaires that do have uh, swimming pools full of coins. Oh, um, yeah, sure. No, I think that, I think that um, chaos theory teaches us, just like, you know, infinite number of mon monkeys and infinite number of typewriters, once you get enough billionaires, at least one of them has a... Scrooge McDuck style swimming pool filled with mm -hmm. literally like gold bullion coins. He's dead. I, I mean, he, like, jumped, he tried jumping into it once and his neck broke. <laughs> right. <laughs> that, I mean, would you? <laughs> so, you know, veering a little bit into, uh, you know, dipping our toes into the water of a swimming pool full of coins, <laughs> what would be the best method for actually being able to swim through, you know, making making the viscosity of a you know, pool full of coins such that you would be able to swim through it. Well, I mean, everything's relative, right? So if your you know, density is sufficiently above that of the coins, uh, you know, the coins are technically a liquid, a, a, a loose, loose tub full of coins. It's technically right. a liquid at some scale. Um, it'll pour, you know, it'll, 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 as a, as a body, it'll mold to its container, which is all you got to be for a liquid. Anyway, the, uh, the, the, but the other thing you'd probably want is some sort of real high structural integrity. So if you were like really dense and had real high structural integrity, basically you'd have to be like made of neutronium. So maybe Scrooge McDuck is actually this like God being. <laughs> it just cannot be harmed by the physical substances present on Earth. On the other hand, I don't know why he doesn't just sink to the core of the planet. I guess you could be well, coded right. in coins, coins would be dense, um, presumably <laughs> more dense than a, than a duck body. Um, right, than a, than a mortal duck body. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, or, or, but let's just let's just let's pretend here. Let's what's let's, let's just say that it was a human. Body. Yeah, let's game this out. Well, yeah. So <laughs> I don't know. Could you say fill it with uh, also a layer of uh, Crisco or? Um... No, 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 no. That wouldn't really. I mean, the 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 real problem is that energy will only transfer at some specific rate based on the you know, inertial mass of whatever you're diving into and the amount of momentum that you're able to deliver with your mass. And, you know, that that rises real efficiently with density. But, you know, trying to in introduce uh, lucibrosity is not very easy chemically. <laughs> I mean, you don't know what the, you know, coefficients of friction are between those two substances. And in some cases, you might actually increase. <laughs> I mean, if it's, if it's really gold bullion, it's already chemically unreactive. Right, mm. it's already going to be only as only as sticky as the surface topography of it makes it covered in edges that you could catch yourself on. But it's not; it's already pretty pretty low viscosity in terms of substances, pure substances. Could you bind it in a solution of some sort? Yeah, yeah. In fact, if you had some sort of really ultimate, you know. Lots and lots of hydrogen double bonds layered upon hydrogen double bonds, blah, 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 binding together, like I say, like neutronium, assuming that neutronium is stable outside of a neutron star. Um, then, yeah, sure, of course you could swim through metal. I mean, the, the, what would happen, though, isn't that the coins would splash everywhere. It's that they would liquefy and become molten. <laughs> <laughs> So you, know, you don't see that, that happening with Scrooge McDuck. So I don't even freaking know what he's up to. Maybe he has a force field around him or something. I don't, I have no idea. Bit of an acquired taste. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I guess that if, uh, if you or someone you know, possibly if, if you're watching this and thinking, well, like, 
that's easy. I, I yeah, that. fill a swimming pool with nickels. Why not? I would love to hear from you and know more about this process. <laughs> feel, free, feel free to call in. Um, so, you know, our earlier discussion uh, about the sort of shortcomings of the capital mechanisms of the United States uh, reminds me of something, which is that there's a new dispatch out from the Pettitshire Economic uh, Institute. Oh, the Pettitshire Economic Council. Yes, the Pettitshire Economic Council, exactly. <laughs> Um, that I'd, that I'd, I'd kind of like to discuss. Oh, sure. I'd love to hear the latest. I, 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 I saw the, uh, that there was an update in my inbox. And I <laughs> got the, you got the news. It. It's Sunday. Nice. Yeah, it's just, it's always comes out on Sunday. It, it's a, they are a virulently atheist organization. I don't know why that's, it's weird. We're doing it on Sunday. We, we it, it will be whatever the old. Sabbath is. That's <laughs> when we're doing it. In your locality. <laughs> <laughs> whatever your local Sabbath is. That's where the dispatch comes out. It's not even nobody even cares. I mean, it's just a news fly. It's not like it stops church. I don't know what their point is. It's anyway. The, what the whatever we are. However, we can <laughs> drop that knife in just a little bit. Right. Here. That's exactly right. So <clears throat> the gist of the discussion was this: that as you and I were just talking about, the system as it exists today doesn't do much to benefit the participants of our economic system writ large. It benefits obviously some tiny, and this is not, this is not meant to be some screed against, you know, whatever, some, some political statement. This is, this, is, this is all just numerically factual. Um, that it's, you know, m- most people don't have access to large amounts of liquid capital and whatever. And the cap- even the capital as it is, it, our dollar, the American dollar is based on this, proposition. It's basically a securities proposition, which says, it's backed by the market, it's backed by the, the US stock market. And it says, we're betting, our, our dollar is betting that the market will continue to grow, or at the very least stay steady. Right. Which is great if you're an investor, and you're, you know, you need capital, you know, you're in the, in the investor class, and you, you're, you, you know, you want some business to succeed. It's terrific. But who, you know, if you're some you know, fuel attendant at a horse station, you know, what do you care? <laughs> <laughs> um, not much, I guess. So the, Famously, the, not the, much. Idea, the idea that was being presented by the author, a one D Pettit, um, was that we could switch currency. We've done it before. You know, we used to be on the bimetallic standard and famously we switched off of that because of... What's the bimetallic standard? The bimetallic standard was when our dollar was backed by a combination of gold and silver. Uh, Previously, it had been backed purely by silver and purely by gold prior to that briefly. Anyway, um, and we switched off of precious metals because they, it was, you know, finite and it was not... Meaning that there was a a treasury, there was ostensibly one gold brick for every dollar that was produced in the country. Yes, right. And the, and the, the sovereign sort of libertarian faction liked the gold standard because there was a tangible trade-off. You could withdraw your money from them. So that gave them some security blanket sense that, you know, whatever. But, um, anyway, we switched off the bimetallic standard to the benefit of the United States in the sense that it made us a lot more um, liquid. As soon as we backed it, backed our dollar with the market, suddenly all this capital was liquid because it didn't have to, you didn't, you could trade it without, you know, it was based on trade shares. So it didn't, you know, it didn't, it didn't require exchange of physical property, i.e. metal uh, to, to be valid, to have, you know, they didn't have to be stock you know uh, uh, metal certificates <laughs> they could be right. exchanged um but anyway the you know the thing is you can base that that proposition that that we're using right now that securities proposition that that gamble that says x is going to be true in the future and if if that is true then our money has value then our currency has value you don't have to back that by, you know, on, on something like the market. You can back that by something like, say, the Human Development Index or the, the, uh, the, the International Happiness Index, right? So you can say, okay, we switched to this currency that's backed by this, you know, some, some fundamentally humanitarian index. Then suddenly any move that you make that 
um, would 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 reduce the quality of living for the population would devalue your dollar. So it disincentivizes predatory moves because predatory moves uh, uh, make businesses worthless in the in the, un, under under such a system. Uh, the other, it, there's a couple of neat benefits to switching to a new cur currency as well. One of which is that it would completely devalue all of the skeezy offshore holding accounts that people have been ratting money away into in the Bahamas and stuff for for decades on end. All of that would just be worthless overnight. Which well, would why be is that? Bad. So, like, so um, can you give us an example? Like, walk us through if you're a business and you uh were suddenly you know it was announced that on june 1st we're switching to a new currency so right. what what does that entail okay well first off there's the the justification and the justification vis-a-vis -vis offshore uh holdings is that a uh, classic truism about money currency currency it's current right is that it just like blood it has to flow to have value, right? And if it's not flowing, it's it's dead. And so when you have these offshore holding accounts that are black holes for money, that money's not flowing. That money is just sitting there statically. And so it winds up being kind of like a blood clot in the system. It's a drag on the on the economic system because so much value is offshore and can't be withdrawn from the system. Right? That that capital is not liquid. Um so there's a there's a, it's 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 it, it to counter the argument, oh, it's unfair to just devalue all that money. Well, that money is harming us economically right now. But secondly, the the uh, you'd still have even if you switched off currencies, everybody would still have their capital holdings, right? So if you own a factory, you'd still own a factory afterwards, right? If you own a farm, you still own the farm. You're still able to generate new currency under the new system, right? But the the by wiping out the liquid the former liquid currency as it stands and redistributing that to the citizens, even if you do it on a one-to-one -one basis so that like each citizen gets, you know, the total amount of currency that's being issued divided by the total population, right? So everybody gets a million dollars or something, right? That even though, yes, technically that's devaluing some people's holdings massively, it's increasing a huge number of people's holdings vastly, vastly, vastly. And so it's this huge stimulus effect. Right. Suddenly, all of the capital in the system is liquid. Right. So huge trade can bloom. It's like the springtime. You know, it's it, it just, you know, people spend like crazy under that scenario. And literally the only group that is is detrimented by it is this teensy tiny, again, by their own design, this teensy <laughs> tiny little group of like a couple hundred billionaires and literally everyone else benefits. Sounds like a pretty, pretty good deal. Um, what, you know, Very what, good. yeah, what, you know, what would it take to, uh, to put forth a system such like, uh, such as this? Oh, I mean, some sort of major change in the fundamental U.S. educational system. <laughs> okay. I mean, I don't it? know, I don't know, I don't know how you even pitch this to, if there's any viewers still left after that, I am <laughs> good on you. You know, I don't, I don't expect people to, to be, to be uh, whatever, excited by these ideas at all, <laughs> even though they're, they'll, they'll solve so many problems. But, you know. That's the thing, right? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's being solution averse, right? Which is saying that right, right. the, the um, like thinking about the problem is going to be worse. We're going to be in a worse off place than we are where we are now. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's know, not, not to say that there isn't like an end result, but like the interim process is going to be different or, you know, perceptibly, perceptibly worse. And so let's avoid it. <laughs> I mean, that's what, you know, well, that's what right. the, the, the sort of, but it's all, it's kind of a mythology based reasoning. Well, it's with the, you know, it's the same as with the pandemic, uh, uh, like birthers. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Same thing there though. Um, I was just shopping with mom out at Safeway and overheard among the, the crowd walking around was a, a, you know, sort of baritone man's voice saying, well, yeah, they got a cure for it. They're just keeping it from us. And I was just thinking to myself, like, I don't, what, I, I, you know, what, 
is there really something that one could do to save this species? <laughs> you know, is that even really a workable proposition? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you know, one of my uh, quoting you, one of one of the the best things that you have ever told me was something about, um, you know, w when it comes to dogs, uh, dogs will eat all the chocolate that you'll ever give them. Right. They <laughs> right. No, right. The, the, so the, the idea being that, like, as the more intelligent entity, the onus is on you. You know that that will hurt the dog. You're not keeping chocolate from that dog because you're mean. In fact, you're keeping chocolate from that dog because you love it, right? right? And it's because you have a better reasoning capacity than that dog. And that's not, <laughs> you know, that's, that's, not, that's not even a, like, unfair, you know what I mean? That's not like, like a biased assessment, right? It's, just, it's, it's bar none, you know, you can open a door with a latch and they cannot period. Well, yeah, in spite of the dog's insistence, it's, you know, it really is in its best interest to not consume yes. poison. Right. And, and we know that and they don't. Right. right. <laughs> and, you know, even if they have some inkling of it, if they still want it, it's like still, it's our responsibility to yeah. ensure that that right. didn't happen. It, right. It, it, right. It, it would, in fact, be irresponsible of us to capitulate to that. Right. So, you know, it's it's good to have a uh, just and fair mind when it comes to making those kind of decisions. Um, and that therein lies the problem, right? <laughs> it's like who whoever holds the strings, um, mm -hmm. they're usually the ones who are, you know, making or not making it happen for mm -hmm. whatever reason. There are proofs of concept that happen every now and then. And some of them even work out. I mean, the you know, the 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 in the. Old school Jewish culture, there's the concept of a kibbutz, which is mm -hmm. like a um, kind of like a, a, a community that's just dedicated to the production of one thing. And like every every person has some contribution to that thing. And the, so the, the little village is organized around producing that thing. And then there'll be a bunch of kibbutzes near each other and they'll each contribute one thing to the like economic chain so like one will be the food kibbutz and one will be the like fabric you know textile kibbutz and anyway and and between the between this like honeycomb of of kibbutzes it's like a it's it's like a commune it's like a like a really old school commune but it's really well structured yeah so it's, well you so can that see that leads to you know guilds and that kind of thing right yeah oh yeah absolutely right no that's, that's exactly right that's exactly right it's just uh, unfortunately it's always overshadowed by like the loudest person's politics. Right, right, right. And, and loud, yeah, loud usually equates to right in our society. <laughs> you know, I mean, in our, in our like ancient troglodyte chimp brain, yes, I mean, you're right. That's how baboons do it, right? Whoever wow. has the biggest canines <laughs> is right. <laughs> It occurs to me that one of the things we should mention is that, at least here in Western Washington, spring, as it did last year, this year, is just a crazy explosion of plants. Oh, it's, yeah, I mean, if it's <laughs> between the, you know, the recent spring, um, I guess, April showers, right? Uh -huh. um, yeah, right. Spring, right, right, right. Flowers. But yeah, like once in Washington, like basically once it has the first rain and um, it's spring and all the little buds that have been waiting to like mm -hmm. unfurl, just like boom, overnight right. kind of come out. So yeah, I've been eaten. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 I had to take a look at a picture that I took of my uh, the block that I live on um, because I, looking outside, it was like the trees were all fully lush. And green, like with full, you know, fully grown. You have, leaves. This is a picture. Yeah, you can you can show this to us. Ah, uh, I would take. A, yeah, I'm. I, yeah, okay. Yeah, here it is. Um, and then the um, <laughs> the uh, I, I I had taken a picture of it a couple of weeks ago, and it was like I, I was sure that the 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 the, the branches were bare, and the, and yeah, I was really were. I looked back and it was two weeks ago. Yeah, it went from being like, you know, barren branches to completely fully loaded in just, you know, mm -hmm. the course of two weeks. Is that la uh, last year or maybe late the year before that, the tree mass, the vegetative mass in Western Washington passed some critical mass to become a cloud forest. The whole hmm. like Salish Sea region became a cloud forest. And the 
you know, the way that's defined is that the plant, the respiration of the plants maintain a certain humidity mass at all. Yeah. You know, like they, yeah. They it all the time. Be some kind of like river in the air kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, it is this yeah. river in the air stuff is, is this, that's exactly what it is. And, um, the, the, you know, I mean, I love it because on the one hand, it's like, oh yeah, I definitely trust the trees. If the, you know, if somebody's going to decide how to terraform the atmosphere, you know, I'm really, I'm really glad that the trees have, have, I mean, again, that's just locally, but, but uh, yeah, I definitely trust the trees a lot more than I trust mankind. Um, but the other neat thing is that it, as of last year, made us um, wildfire resistant. The mm. wildfires basically stopped at the edge of the, um, you know, Puget Forest in Washington State. That's true. We didn't have a summer that was just like, you know, Mad Max style. No, like we had. Yeah. I mean, for the past two summers, uh, we had had, you know, weeks of like blackout sun um, where the just smoke mm -hmm. coming from Canada. Yeah. Forest fires were so overwhelming to the whole state that, you know, you couldn't see more than a mile. <laughs> it led to me, the smell in the air led to me calling online for s'mores recipes because yeah. the world smells so much like s'mores all the time. I, I kind of, you know, yeah, it was, it was kind of sexy in a certain light. Um, but yeah, it, was, it would certainly, it did, it'll it, be it, interesting to see head. what the, you know, if there's any kind of long-term impact from this, you know, wholly unexpected pause on uh, carbon emissions from the planet. Oh. Yeah, no, it's just it. So what's heartening to me is how fast the the system does process pollution. So it's like, gosh, if we gave it half a chance, it would clean itself up pretty quick. You know, I don't trust us to give it that chance. But, you know, for the during, like you say, during the pandemic, at least it's we're seeing a trial run of that. And like yep. people are seeing you know, Kilimanjaro for the first time and, you know, like all kinds of crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know, it may, you know, it may be artificial and it may be uh, temporary, but um, it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, as a person who um, I've been, I've, I've been, I think I'm a pretty good pandemic kiddo kiddo. Like I haven't had, um, you know, I, I, I have a well enough stocked pantry that I can yeah, yeah, right. not leave the house uh, right. for not violate the stay at home couple, you know, usually a week on end, if, if not two. And uh, yeah, it's all pretty great. But then, you know, walking around my neighborhood, um, that's where if I look out the windows, there's never a time where it's like, well, there's, you know, humanity's dead. I mean, I can always see cars or sure, people sure. walking around some, some indication. Of but yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, it's walking around the neighborhood, seeing how many businesses are closed and mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, probably not coming back. You know, there's there's definitely businesses that have, you know, all their right, shelves are it's, it's completely demolished and it doesn't look like they're planning to, to come back. And that's, you know, yeah. How could you okay. know? So this is another this brings up another good economic point, which is that. This is the kind of thing that a federal government should be for. Nothing, no other entity can really provide a solution for this. This is the sort of thing that socialism is the only solution to, right? Wherein, like I say, there should be, rather than doing like small business loans to try and float people, we should be doing grants because mm -hmm. it's nobody's fault that we're in the middle of a pandemic. It's not like this was some risky business venture that the small business owners got into, right? <laughs> they just struck right. by a pandemic. So... This should be, we should, we should have a system under which you can apply for a grant. That grant is reviewed by an independent board and the, the money is, is sequestered by, the, by Congress to pay for it. But Congress shouldn't have any say in who gets it. And the, you know, no, none of those applications should ever go directly to Congress, right? There should be a, an independent body, an independent commission that's capable of making those. And then just make them grants that you don't, you don't have to pay them back. Right. You're like, OK, yeah, you qualified because you were a business during the pandemic. So, yes, you hmm. qualify for whatever the value of your business is. Here's your grant. Here's your stimulus grant. Instead, well, as long as, right. You, the, you know, we have a government that is providing stimulus and that has, you know, that apparently is just going to be borrowing this money against itself until. Uh, it's I guess just maintaining like it's, it's putting a middleman in the loop. 
right? It's just it's oh, just yeah, in, many middlemen tying a is tying an interest rate. I mean, some t- sometimes they're they're zero interest loans, but a bunch of them aren't. They're low rate. You know, the the Fed cut the rates, of, you know, month and a whatever month and a half. I don't know. Times so. I mean, somebody just 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 you know mentioned that like you know the 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 impeachment was like four months ago oh god was it <laughs> yeah right doesn't it feel like it was about 12 years ago <laughs> oh it just yeah like a whole different century <laughs> it's just crazy <laughs> just totally that crazy. time distortion phenomenon is really going to you know i wonder when that will stop seeming weird because you know i mean there was yeah maybe the 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 impeachment was four months ago but you know, I was thinking back to like, when was that thing I did with mom? Oh, it was, it was November. <laughs> you know, that seems like it right. was four months ago. Yeah. Right. You know, but the, <laughs> the stuff that is, um, you know, non, what, just chaos and non-tangential, pretty much. I mean, you know, it's, it's all kind of this nightly kabuki that we have to watch. But yeah. it doesn't, I mean, the pandemic stuff is definitely has more of a local impact. But most of the, you know, politics, the day-to-day Washington stuff doesn't, have that big an impact on white people <laughs> well right, right? I, mean, that's, I mean essentially and that's of course that's another another thing that's shaking out right now is that there's this disproportion of course like it like in it, categorically every other aspect of american civil life there's this huge you know uh, uh disadvantage placed on you know minorities of any kind well uh, you know, the, so the, the pandemic's showing that, you know, like black and brown people are, you know, uh, uh, bearing like 80% of the cases, you know, of, right. of virus infection. And, you know, that this is, again, this is an opportunity, right? So all of these things, all of these like social programs that the political right would have you believe would crash the economic system and cause a shutdown, cause all kinds of loss. Well, we, that's already happened. <laughs> We've already paid that price, right? So this is the perfect opportunity to do things like restart the system without all of those bias tangles built into it. You know, right. those are all just sort of traditional. We can just not do those now. Right, like not build in so many loopholes from the start. Yeah, right. exactly. I mean, it, you know, that is essentially the, um, you know, the system of government governance that I proposed, um, you know, in the in the Fendo satellite network, mm-hmm. you know, is to have something that is like objectively accountable to everybody in the system. You well, know, right. So so that, that essentially a special interest free. Well, the, if you, you know, the, 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 what we are doing is coming up with solutions that are based on what we objectively determine is what we want, you know, and we work towards everything that isn't that, right? So we just like, until, until it comes that we don't have lead in water, you know, we keep looking at why there's lead in water and just, you know, examining those kind of issues. And, you know, rather than trying to figure out who did it or why it's there or, (laughs) you know, basically like, you know, why, you know, who's to blame for this? It's like, we don't, that's boring. We don't care about why. (laughs) We just really want to, you know. Well, we don't care about why yet. Well, we don't care about why yet, right? I mean, we basically don't care about why as an access to not take action. Right. You know, there's always got to be like another way to look around and say, hey, well, you know, let's find out more. (laughs) Right. Yeah. So. One of the weird things that has occurred during this whole thing is that there's been this oil price suppression. Yeah. Made gasoline really cheap, which is kind of fun. Um, and led to one of the best jokes of all time on Facebook. I am, you know, you know um, chagrin to quote a meme, but it was, if oil prices get any lower, Congress is going to have to, or uh, Exxon Mobil is going to have to lay off some members of Congress. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, but anyway, one of the, the effects of, the pandemic is that, like you say, there's so much less traffic on the roads. And it's kind of comforting because it really is like being back in high school again or something. Like, we're all staying home all day. No, it's like summer, you know. (laughs) 
and there's no cars on there. It's just, you know, you can drive through intersections and there's not, you know, some pile of traffic on the other side. <laughs> like this mythical summer vacation that may or may not have ever happened. What? I don't know. I have this weird, like, I don't know if it's a past life or if it's a, some kind of a, I have this like remembrance of like beach vacation summer and, um, you know, where I was staying in like a little beach town with a bunch of other like kids and running around and doing beach stuff at night, <laughs> you know, like we were kind of had a lot of freedom. But like, as far as I know, that didn't actually ever happen. Really? Yeah. Well, what, what kind of what kind of beach environment was it? I mean, oh, like a little kind of like beach town, uh, like Birch Bay or, you know, some kind of like sort of tour. You know, the uh, lived up there. Well, I know that we have, you know, I've I've been to places like that, but I just don't ever think I had a summer where I was just hanging out with other teens on the beach, and, yeah, <laughs> like going to beach like parties and time. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't, I don't actually think it happened, but yet I could tell you how it smells. <laughs> <laughs> but you could just be synthesizing how it smells. I could be, right? It could be an implanted um, Android memory that... Um, well, or or just, I mean, you know... The imagination's powerful. Yeah, I guess so. But still, it you know, I I, I still kind of aspire towards that lifestyle. You know, who wouldn't want to have like a nice <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> rent a bungalow on the beach yeah, and just you know, right. go out and get groceries and make dinner at the little kitchen in the beach house. Uh-huh. Those people who are able to do that always have an undisclosed source of income. Well, the parents aren't there, so I don't know like where <laughs> their parents are, yeah. like, what their parents are up to. Being being independent is, wealthy, apparently. I did, you know, when I was in probably high school, we did watch an awful lot of those like uh American international pictures. Um Annette Funicello uh-huh. and Beach Party. Yeah, Party. yeah, right. Like I idealized like Californian beach scene. Yeah, with like 30 year olds dancing around <laughs> yeah, and playing teenagers. Yeah, right. <laughs> My favorite archetype from that movie is the like the like um like burnout beach bum guy who's usually tall and muscular but like you say like maybe in his like 40s and wearing of like a a white canvas you know beach hat and like is kind of dumb and wears a vest maybe and you know just talks like a hipster well there was jody was that character in the, <laughs> uh, was it jody i think it was jody yeah, and all the beach party movies, that was the archetype. Yeah, 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 right. And and it was all played by the same guy, right? Yeah, it was, you know, it was a little like, it was a little like a franchise in that they would have ostensibly like the main characters were the it same. Was like, it was kind of like, it was kind of like how... Of story, they were kind of interchangeable. They could be, you know... Yeah, right, yeah, they were, they were just... Into sort, another sort of scenario archetypes rather than... Yeah, the, it, it, so kind of like how a celebrity could pop out on on Batman, and they might be the celebrity, but they might also be they might instead be the most famous character of that celebrity. <laughs> right, that gets complicated. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, uh, definitely Hollywood asks a lot of um, suspension of disbelief when it comes to those oh, kind of man. characters. You do not have to go back far <laughs> before that. So true of just every film. I went back and watched films that I respected as like sci-fi action films from the nineties. And based on, you know, compared to the like modern day trend of like, at least trying to make <laughs> as much verisimilitude as possible, you know, in your visual presentations, man, that, that is a very young era <laughs> of, you know, of, of movie making. You do not have to go back far before it's really just, so much suspension of disbelief is required and not just in the like visual effects, but in the like scripting. I mean, it's incredible what people were expected to lap up. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I guess it, you know, it pays to do a little bit of research when you're writing a, a script or a, you know, Some effort in- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've, you know, we've, we've had, um, you know, initially on our brother. So we went over a lot of different episodes of things that, uh, you know, basically we're like no reference materials. Let's just, I've always kind of been in love with Paris, but I don't think I ever want to go there. So um, <laughs> how about we throw together an episode? Um, you, no, you, you're right, your no, best no guess no what Paris is like, and I'll do mine. And then we'll just like call yeah. it a day. 
<laughs> yeah. Right. Well, and, and, and that just like, I mean, I don't know what kind of weird, like boozy scotch filled writers rooms existed. that were just like ubiquitous in Hollywood, but like, it just goes downhill. Like movie movies are the lowest offenders on that totem pole. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you, you try and watch like, as you've pointed out, Hanna-Barbera cartoons from the seventies. And it's just like, Ugh. You know, God, this this episode was clearly written by somebody with three hours of sleep and a hangout over, you know, just not phoned it in. <laughs> I think it was just about, you know, it was definitely quantity over qual- quality. Oh, definitely. Um, definitely. But it's like, yeah, what was your quota? Like you had to just like, we got to get 50 episodes done today. I don't care what it takes. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, I mean, well, I mean, think of things like cartoons that were weekly. I mean, I guess like The Simpsons still is, but, you know, hand animated stuff, that would be such an undertaking. Yeah, well, well, yeah, weekly. I mean, the turnaround on those. Yeah, I don't know how much you have to have like, in the can. That was All I know is that Hanna like, Barbera Park episodes. at their height were probably putting out what? 30 consecutive shows? What, what do you think the, the broadest output they ever had to do was? For which show? For Hanna Barbera, just as a studio. God, I, yeah, I, I've never analyzed that. Like, how many episodes made up a season, or you know, mm-hmm. whatever it was. It definitely but... used to be a hell of a lot more than it is now. You know, seasons these days are like ten episodes long of things, or something like that. You know, seasons used. I, to yeah, be like I guess it was thirty I mean, episodes long when we were. I, I don't remember how seasons worked. You know, I, I mean, I think there probably was like a summer saturday morning kind of season that <laughs> yeah. um that all the networks would try to have um but i've gone i've gone back and watched some of those cartoons from childhood and they um the seasons have huge numbers of episodes sometimes the season will have 40 episodes and i just think to myself like when did that run did that single season was that single season broadcast in a single year you know i wondered about that with you know my my um my weird uh obsession i guess i had a thing about you know taping series i i i felt like once i started taping a show i had to just like be right it was a every episode of it regardless yeah. of how badly the show started veering off its original mm-hmm. but beetlejuice the cartoon was one yeah. like that where right. they started on cbs i believe or, or yeah a- what a- 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 abc i don't remember ABC. anyway it was abc first and then to fox Sure. So that, you know, it was a weekly thing, a weekly, weekly show um, Mm -hmm. when it was on Saturdays. And then um, they went to daily and it was just like how I don't know how they did it. You know, like how could they have even banked that many episodes to have like. Right. Yeah. It doesn't seem possible. And they're not the only one. But the quality certainly dropped off. um, Oh, yeah. Right. No, it was was certainly a dumb trade off. (laughs) Yeah. No, I don't know what what kind of insane demand from a network executive would call for a daily cartoon. Go go go! <laughs> Just, <Yeah. laughs> we need these these ghost. Uh, I mean, what was even the show about? It was like uh, like a creepy ghost man hanging out with a young girl and going on kind of misadventures in the, the netherworld. Yeah, it was. I mean the you know the original concept the original concept actually was literally by tim burton like he was in he was he was on the original design team or whatever because he's always listed as a producer and he's always you know there's the he's i think he's given an art credit or something but um originally it was kind of this neat thing because they presented the netherworld the netherworld which was like this great surrealist like you know whatever kind of twisted 1950s plastic fantastic but like bizarre (laughs) you know um surreal underworld and that was great that was fun and they used to have all these adventures right and then like you say they became after it became daily the 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 plots became pretty um well trod let's say yeah yeah Uh, yeah just like it seems like it would have been taxing to come up with that many boring episodes. Of course it would. You and I know that just writing one of anything is impossible. (laughs) I guess it's just a job. You you punch in, you punch out, you know, 
sure I got to get like yeah. 40 episodes of Beetlejuice in the can. Well, this is like before we were before we were broadcasting here, we were talking about production studios and how there are just all these like perfectly talented musicians out there who their career is working in a production studio and they produce sometimes brilliant music and just oh, yeah, they just never affiliated with it. And, yeah. Yeah. And, well, I mean, I, you know, that was um, that kind of like art form as profession motif is there's, there's something depressing about it. Well, you know, they, they, so mom wrote a book a couple years ago, Friendship mm-hmm. House, Homeless Hospitality. Mm-hmm. Um, and after that, there was a little bit of like, uh, you know, kind of press, <laughs> press junket to her. Um, yeah, right. And then right. I remember she was on a panel with other uh, like authors, authors like self, self-published authors. Yeah. authors. And yeah. what was fascinating about it was that, you know, um, a couple of them were there who were just like, yeah, like what? That my, pro- my profession is I'm a writer. I write I write novels. And or like, or Leah, like I'm a professional ghostwriter. Well, like so. right now she was writing vampire novels because that's what sells. Like, oh, do you like yeah. vampire novels? Well, not particularly. I just write them. Right. And that no, was no, just no like passion involved at all. Well, it was such a like, uh, like weird. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. guess you could just it'd be like being a technical writer. I guess you know I'm not. Well, I mean, I'm technically many, a writer, but I'm not sp- specifically passionate about. <laughs> right. The but, stuff that I write about. So I know, guess if, that makes if, sense. I have to imagine that for each. For every art field, that's the majority of jobs. I mean, the majority of painting jobs have to be like creating, you know, whatever Pier One paintings of like whatever sloppy versions of Barcelona or whatever. But you know, <laughs> well, if, if it pays the bills, you know, you don't have a to. Be novel just that. seems like you have to do so much more work. Like, yeah, investment in the characters. Yeah, at yeah. Least. Or I guess maybe you can just formulaically do that too, but. Um, <laughs> you sure can. They Who have whole those? writing <laughs> books for dummies. I, you know, I, there, I'm sure there there are many tropes of the personality types that are likely to read vampire romance novels, like dime store, procedurally <laughs> generated <laughs> right. vampire novels. Frank, Frank, I mean, uh, essentially, right? There, eventually, you will have that. Eventually. There will be enough like young students by 2031 who are dabbling in like neural nets that you'll you'll be able to go online and for any novel genre that exists, you'll literally be able to push a little button in a in a HTML5 window and it'll just output a v- vampire romance novel for you or whatever else you want. Well, we're pretty close. I oh, mean, yeah, we are. You know, you go to talk to Transformer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can already have it, you know, basically auto-complete your novel um, right. on whatever topic you could possibly imagine. Yep. And it, you know, it does a <sighs> it does a, it does a statistically job. Job it only it. look at a paragraph at a time. Well, and the, you know, the the genius in that kind of uh, exercise is how much, um, you know, when you under train. A model like that, mm-hmm. a certain amount, like right. that's where the real humidity, the comedy gold comes out, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. No, those are the best. I know. Who wants a functional, like, literate AI? Where's the fun in that? <laughs> well, you know, I, I don't know. For, um, our mom has gotten a little bit interested in AI recently. I think she's reading a book that has something to do with yeah. that, and um, it's really interesting trying to, uh, you know, explore those concepts with her. Um, you know, as being kind of like what a what what's, what's a neural network and like how did the, how do neurons yeah. work and um, it's just it's kind of fun because um, it she's seeing like oh yeah well it's kind of like how the brain works and I'm like well it is right mm-hmm. and we can kind of follow it but we need it to show its work like that's important. yeah yeah right exactly that's right. an important sp- part of this is that you can't have black box elements when you know when you're giving it no instructions on how to figure it out mm-hmm. um right. you need to be able to track that because once right. you get to a point where you can't tell how it's making decisions or what right. um it There's becomes dangerous you know it becomes right. it becomes um risky for uh the humans involved and well, you, you know you, we can see a little know. bit of that now you know they they say that there's no way that anyone could decipher the like youtube algorithm you know that that suggests videos to you or, or amazon's algorithm there's oh, no sure. way that any one sure. person could say like oh i can point my finger at like how this is making that decision no and, right because it's you can be sure that the that the data has been collected and stored as such columns of strings of you know alphanumerics they're just, it only means something, some language that only means something to the algorithm at this point. 
Right. And it's, you know, it's really interesting to see how different um, algorithms, how how good they do and how bad they do and, and, and what kind of genres. You really see like, that in search engines. Like in well, because like, you know, Amazon just period. knows everything that I do and move. And like, I've just, that's the concession, right? Like we've, we're already at that future that it's too late to have opted out. And um, right. Uh, at this point in the history, if you're a foot fetishist, Amazon's aware, well aware of it. <laughs> well, that and, you know, to, to bo- suddenly boycott Amazon. I mean, it just is one way or the other. Uh, you're not going to avoid Amazon Web Services. Like, it's just it's it's no, not no, a no, reality right. that we live it's in anymore. 70 percent of all that it's feasible to just, you know, be take a stand that I'm not going to use any Amazon products. Right. It's, it's right. You could you wouldn't be you wouldn't be functional anymore. Right. Much. And, you know, but th- the other side of that is. Um, what I'm always disappointed by is the, like Netflix doesn't know me at all. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it, it very rarely recommends stuff that I want to watch. Right. And also a uh, long time now. Well, it's like for decades, yeah. you know, it's, it's right. getting to the point where some of these services have known me for that long. Right. And, right. you know, Not how is it that you still can't think of one thing that I want to, you know, some video game that I'd like to play that's a little bit like the other ones I like to play. Yeah. Instead, it's always giving me just like, well, maybe today's the day that he likes hardcore, uh, you know, uh, death metal RPGs. And yeah, I'm like, right. I just, that's wrong. I don't think that's this is going to be my thing. Gonna, yeah, no, I know. On the other hand, um, now, granted, they've poured all of their money into this, but Facebook's predictive algorithms are pretty good i'm sometimes pretty shocked by it introducing me to things that like i'm you know there's the the like the like activist part of my brain's like i'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna take some suggestion from you facebook and then there's the, <laughs> the other like consumers part of me that's like i had no idea that existed and i really really wanted to look into it right now yeah <laughs> i definitely so- had to tell facebook like look <laughs> don't show me this ad anymore because yes, this is, don't te- don't you tempt me facebook <laughs> i'm i'm you and i both know that i want this and yes, I'm, yes, I'm, yes, that's, that's, not, that's not the issue here the issue is not that you have not found me a very nice gift <laughs> yeah so <laughs> it's definitely you know it's uh it's it's a little bit disappointing that um that this push button future that has arrived uh-huh. Um, you know, that really like video phones are here and Oh yeah, here know, we are. It took a long time and um <laughs> it it kind of just came without any fanfare. Absolutely you know, right. No, it's, it's, it was it's, always it's, a little it's, surprised by that that there was no big moment where like, oh, video phones are here. It was just like, you know, people were using FaceTime and Skype and then all of a sudden it was ubiquitous without mm-hmm. like Kind of like drones, how how just yeah. one day drones were everywhere. It was a major industry. <laughs> well, I, for example, there was the most impressive thing I've ever seen was this um, for New Year's of 2020. I believe it was in Singapore. There was like a, um, uh, you know, New Year's countdown display, you know, municipal public oh, display. Yeah, was, right. That's right. Harbor. Harbor. And it was like animation. <laughs> it was in like this sky. bird flying in, this animation in the sky. sky. It was like a you know animated man running and birds and then a clock that formed and it had like the numbers all animating and I was like, f- are like fireworks this advanced? Right, are they? The right, are they are what this happened? Magic? <laughs> you know, and of course it was drones, but yeah, like yeah. still, it was drones that were like spelling out giant animated billboards. Mm-hmm. Like that's right. neat, right? And nobody even were, bat, we were, bat an eye. Like you say, with no fanfare, yeah. we were already at that point when they did that. Yeah. Well. Just um, turns out we could do that at that point. I don't know. I guess there's just everything's uh, amazing. Um, I don't know. I, I just for <laughs> context, I was watching. Um, there's a there's a, a, a series of videos on the the Fine Brothers Networks of uh, Kids React, and mm-hmm. um, occasionally they'll have like kids react to some old vintage product, like a you know a, a rotary phone or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, they had one that was about. Um, trapper keepers which <laughs> you know were like binders that you right. know were kind of cool and graphic designy and right um, everybody older than a certain age knows what a trapper keeper was. yeah like everybody in the 80s who you know 80s early 90s had you know wanted a trapper keeper i think we were specifically forbidden from getting trapper keepers at my I think so too right yeah i think they were not allowed and the only thing i can think is because it was maybe the velcro on it would be I guess. Like, I... 
So they also had a they also had a non standard spine lock and paper locking mechanism. I it can't seems remember like a called. weird technicality, but uh, you know who knows what you know the, the school board in the eighties. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> Some <laughs> concerned person futzing over. Well, these trapper keepers boycott me. Uh, but the, the kids react video. The kids were just like, just like the fa- what. A notebook. As am was I it, now looking back at Trapper Keepers that we were was it like the first on. notebook. Like, what? Why was this on TV? Like, we don't really ever advertise. Why would, why would kids give two rats asses about? <laughs> well, you know, one of the quotes was you know, from the you know, completely unironically. You know, the one of the the kids said, "Well, I guess it's just like, you know, everything's amazing now." So. You know. <laughs> As you are, you do live in the future, Meet the bar. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, Trapper Keeper. But then, it, you know, there was this like nostalgic resurgence that's like eBay Trapper Keeper. <laughs> I don't know. They, I, you, know. you know what I wonder? I wonder how far voice chip technology has come. I'm sort of curious to find out in a modern toy. Like, is it still a tinny little like G.I. Joe? Or is it, you know, do they actually have like nice high fidelity like digital you know dynamically generated voices that's a good question i mean it's probably as much about the speaker as the chip itself um absolutely it is but we have better like pizza electric speakers than we ever had back in the day i'm not sure i mean you know i've i was using you know speaking of just that weird you know for my microphone i use my um you know fancy oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. hn4 <laughs> yeah but it has a built-in speaker on the back, and it, you know why? It, it's so. It can't possibly deliver the the fidelity with which the recording is happening, or even try to even like scratch the surface. It goes from being you know a a, a high fidelity you know multi-track <laughs> recording to just like worse than you know basically like a a, a greeting card <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it just seems like everything else is so high end about this that why why would you skimp on that speaker because it is an audio device but hey yeah well yeah yeah that yeah. said i what what happened is it you know I, my laptop thought i wanted to use it as a speaker so the first thing i did was yeah, immediately right. turn it off so i think you know it's always so scattershot what the what like peripherals the my device is going to choose it's never the same. It's never just like, oh, I just plugged something in, and so it's going to alert me and say, oh, do you want to use that? On the other hand, sometimes it's like, oh, I left that plugged in, and now it's discovered it, <laughs> and it's decided it's going to be the primary output. That again, I, you know, I, I've worked at Microsoft off and on for the last twenty years, and I have never had an adequate explanation about all that device enumeration and. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, why is it so unreliable? I mean, and, and mo- most of the time it's not. And I think that that is really needs to be, you know, I really want to um, remind people about how unreliable computers were for the, you yeah. know, for the lot for as long as they've been consumer products, you know, the past blue screen of death. And like it just it's pretty rare these days to find a reason that your computer needs to you know st- shut off a program or whatever i mean well yeah i do i do you know sort of uh freelance computer repair as my primary source of income and uh it's you know even even among my clientele who are not particularly tech savvy i don't ever really encounter genuine system crashes almost ever yeah so that's you know it's a good reminder that like Things are much better about talking to each other. You know, you really can mostly plug in stuff and it works much of the time. But um, Mm -hmm. that said, there's never, you know, there's never, it never usually works the first time exactly the way it's There's there's almost always a little futzing. But I think that one of the advancements that's been made is literally in like just the math of stream compression. Like, you know, they're just, there's new math now that has been useful to, you know, be able to deliver compressed data at a higher fidelity rate than it was ever possible and you know we've got broadband which is right. um a miracle <laughs> yes right and, and getting more so in rapidly. yeah i mean i have nothing bad to say about you know other than it's, uh, it's a giant monopoly and should be a um you well, know, but it doesn't have to be 
public I mean, utility a, that a product, uh, product it's fine <laughs> no but like the concept is great yeah an interconnected network yeah <laughs> right for, for sharing college papers and uh you know defense codes <laughs> right. mostly <laughs> you know you, you mostly want to send research yeah tell well, that it to your one would hope. Yeah. bbs at 20 year professor yeah. <laughs> well my brother we're at six 607 uh pacific oh really yeah. that amazing you're right wow the time flies when you're having fun eh yeah i guess so so well this is a an interesting first return to our free form episode uh yeah we'll, we'll have to see what people think of this format yeah <laughs> uh and uh, coming up uh, next week we've got uh, another episode on next sunday at 5 p.m um, and that's to be determined, but, um, yeah, we'll content, be a multimedia yeah. Yeah. visual, um, feast for the eyes and senses. Um, we'll try and make it as entertaining as possible. Hey, that's the goal here, right? Keep you, uh, keep you company during this pandemic right. time. Exactly right. Keep you entertained. So what I'm going to say to you, my brother, is I'm wishing you the best of the week. Well, and I wish you a safe return to us next week. Until then. Good night, everybody. Now. Mm-hmm. <laughs>